Hello, I'm Nils, and in this video, I'll be talking about a possible way to reset your epigenetic clock. Just a reminder that nothing in this video or the other videos on this channel is intended as medical advice, so please don't take it that way. I'm just sharing information. A recent study suggests that taking five compounds together can turn back Horvath's epigenetic clock. In this video, I'll be calling the compounds the Horvath cocktail. The ingredients are human growth hormone, metformin, DHEA, vitamin D3, and zinc. In theory, resetting the clock could add healthy years to a person's life. If you turn the clock back two years, according to Dr. David Sinclair, you might possibly, theoretically, live two years longer as a result. Some researchers, such as Peter Atia, are dubious. Atia points out that the study had only nine participants and had poor controls. And at least one of the components they were taking, synthetic human growth hormone, can be dangerous, according to some studies. Nonetheless, some people in the anti-aging community have been looking into whether it might be possible to emulate the study on their own. One way of doing so might be to get prescriptions of metformin and human growth hormone from your doctor if he or she is willing to prescribe them and take the other components in the study as nutritional supplements. Or if you don't want to do that, or if your doctor isn't all that cooperative, um, you might try substituting berberine for metformin. They both lower blood glucose in somewhat similar ways, taking the zinc, vitamin D, and DHEA as supplements, and focus on raising your human growth hormone levels by non-pharmaceutical means, which do not appear to have the same negative effects. So let's talk about how to raise human growth hormone levels naturally. One method of raising human growth hormone is fasting. Even skipping dinner, not eating before bed, regularly will raise your HGH levels somewhat. As a bonus, intermittent fasting also raises NAD, nicotinamide adenine denucleotide, another compound that appears to have anti-aging benefits. Another method would be supplementation, not with human growth hormone, but with amino acids that stimulate the body's production of HGH. One study found that you can raise your levels significantly by taking these two supplements together, 1,500 milligrams of lysine and 1,500 milligrams of arginine. I found this to be a very interesting study. Subjects were given arginine and lysine in the amounts mentioned above with and without exercising. Their blood levels of human growth hormone were tested 30, 60, and 90 minutes later. At 60 minutes, their human growth hormone levels were significantly elevated, but only in the group that had not exercised. Exercise actually appeared to negate the benefits of supplementation in this study. I tried taking lysine and arginine together, but I found it hard to fit them into my eating and fasting schedules at the time, which are designed to increase AMPK most days and to activate mTOR only in a very limited time window. Instead, I started doing alternate day fasting. I fast all day on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I eat meals on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Sunday is a wild card. I can do whatever I feel like. I can either fast or eat. If you wanted to try something similar, but you didn't want to try all day fasting, you could try doing modified ADF instead, which allows people to eat one 500 or 600 calorie meal on their fasting days. So when you fast, your human growth hormone levels will skyrocket. By 36 hours, the end of your 36 hour fast, the start of your feasting day, your human growth hormone levels should be around 200 to 300% higher than they normally would be at that time. So it's an ideal time to add in the other components. So on my fasting days, I take berberine, 
vitamin D, zinc, and DHEA, similar to the study, but I'm substituting berberine for metformin. On my feasting days lately, I've been taking chromium colonate instead of berberine because chromium appears to support muscle growth and may also raise testosterone levels. Then I break my fast and then I work out an hour or two later. I've been doing the above for a few weeks, and I recently added in one more anti-aging component. On feasting days, I also take AAKG. AKG in the form of calcium AKG is strongly associated with both anti-frailty and anti-aging effects. It's somewhat of a question whether arginine AKG would have similar effects, but I thought I'd try it. Arginine does raise mTOR, which I'm more interested in doing when I'm feasting rather than when I'm fasting. So again, I take it toward the end of my 36-hour fast and toward the beginning of my feasting period. So my regimen is, number one, true alternate day fasting as contrasted to modified ADF. I don't eat at all on Mondays, Wednesdays, or Fridays, as I mentioned above. The results should be significantly higher HGH. I take my supplements on both fasting days and feasting days, with a few changes. On fasting days, I take um, the supplements I mentioned above and some others that I'll talk about in a moment, with a small amount of celery juice. Celery juice has almost zero c carbohydrates, no fat and no protein, so I'm not worried about breaking my fast. In terms of DHEA, I've tried both the DHEA cream and capsules. I can say that both of them work pretty well for me. I get a little jolt of energy when taking them, whether I'm taking it as a supplement um, in capsule form or applying DHEA to my skin. On feasting days, which would be for me Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, I add the AAKG to the mix. Then I wait a little while, and maybe an hour or so later, I'll have a high-protein meal. So I want to also look at how much of a change this was for me, because I was already taking a number of these supplements for other reasons. I had been taking berberine to control blood glucose, and I've been taking DHEA um, for testosterone and for other benefits for many months. So for me, it was really more of a matter of changing the timing of the supplements I was taking than taking something new. So far, even though I had been taking several of these supplements before, I have noticed a boost in my energy, both physical and mental, particularly on the days when I add in the AAKG, which of course you would expect because AAKG has some arginine, which is definitely an energy booster. Now, I should be clear that these are not the only anti-aging supplements that I'm taking. I actually take as many as 30 or 40 different supplements a day. Um, I take stacks of NAD boosters, and I take sirtuin activators, and I take testosterone boosters um, most days of the week, whether or not I'm feasting or fasting. The order that I take them is a little bit iffy. Sometimes I'll start with the NAD boosters. Sometimes I'll start with the Horvath cocktail. Um, once in a while, I'll start with the testosterone boosters. It doesn't really seem to make a very big difference in the results. I should also be clear that this is not in any way a controlled experiment. It's just an N equals one exploration, an experiment that I'm conducting on myself to see what differences, if any, I notice. I have no way of knowing for sure whether any changes that I do notice are due to this protocol or to its combination with the other things that I'm doing and taking to try to promote longevity. This video was sponsored by Do Not Age. If you look below the video, you'll find links to products on their website. Using the discount code PATHWAYS will give you a savings of 10% off.